Hello, welcome my friends. This is episode 10 of Tech in Your Homeschool where I get on Facebook Live just about every day and share some quick tips on adding more digital learning into your homeschool. I am Beth Napoli and I'm the homeschooling mom of five girls. We've been homeschooling for about 12 years and in that 12 years our um, homeschooling has changed with the advent of technology and all the improvements there and I like to find um, ways for my girls to be online using digital tools in our homeschooling so that I can better prepare them for a life in this technology driven world and I'd like to share my ideas with other people so that's what this broadcast is all about that inspire you to add more digital learning to your homeschool also so today what I want to share with you this week I've been talking about just little tips on how to get started with in you know adding just a little bit of technology into your home learning and your system that you've got going already. I've already shared about the value of ebooks. I shared a few days ago about some digital planning tools and record keeping tools. And today my tip for you is that one way that you can start adding a little bit more tech and digital learning is by having your children do digital projects in response to what they're learning. So still, you know, using your curriculum or your books or whatever you have been doing, but having their response in their project be something that they, that they create online. So for example, instead of having your kids do a research report about frogs, why not have them do a digital presentation using a program like Amaze or Prezi? Or instead of a book report, have your kids get on Canva or pick Monkey and design a book cover for that book. And then maybe a, a front and back book cover. And in the back, they can type in a summary of the book. So just a different way to respond to what they've been doing. Um, another idea is if they do a hands-on project, say you create a volcano with the old uh, baking soda and vinegar. Well, have your kids be taking pictures along the way to document their process of what they're doing. Have them take a video of the final product and then have them create a presentation about that with the different steps of how to and then they can even use that to maybe teach other kids how to do the same project. Um, you could use presentation program like Amaze or you can once again just use a digital design program and make a collage of those pictures with the text and the different text. So just another way to present what they're doing and to be honest when kids do a project like the volcano and then they can share back how they did it that's a sign of deeper learning and they will remember better what they did I think you could probably agree on that send me some hearts or leave me a comment if you agree with that that they need the application and they need to share back to others what they've been doing some other ideas for adding digital learning if you're simply learning vocabulary about your study of photosynthesis there are lots of tools online where the kids can create a crossword puzzle where they put in the definitions, they put in the words, and then they can print it out and they can fill in their crossword puzzle and it gives them more interaction with those terms that they're learning. You can use Google's My Maps and keep track of all the different places that you're learning about, um, even if it's not actually geography, say in art that you're learning about Annie Warhol, okay, well where did he live? And you can put a, a pin right there in Google Maps about where he lived and then maybe you'll say, oh, wow, you know, a few months ago we learned this thing and that was pretty nearby there. And so they can start making relationships. The kids will start connecting their different learning. Same with timelines. If you uh, use a timeline tool, and the kids will see relation, you know, use it over years, and the kids will see relationships and remember things that they've learned in the past. So digital projects, there's lots of advantages to uh, going digital with your projects. I mentioned the one is that they're more long-lasting, and the kids see the connections. Digital projects take up less space for you. You've got to admit that. After they do the presentation about the volcano, the volcano can sit around for a few weeks and then it can disappear once the entrance is lost, but you still have the record of what they did with that digital collage that they made or that presentation that they made. Other advantages is that the kids are learning to use tech tools and they're recognizing the computer as a product 
activity tool, not just something that's used for playing. And so if your kids are going to be online, which they are going to be, and which they should be, because we need to prepare them for the future, and we need to help them to develop healthy tech habits. So if your kids are going to be on the computer, let's have them be productive while they're, th while they're there doing things to create. Um, and also, when you are creating these digital projects, they're much more easily shared. I think it's really important for the kids to know that they're going to have a live audience for what they're doing, that people are going to react and respond to what they share and what they've they've learned. And so most of the web tools I recommend have easy ways for you to share on social media what you've been doing. So that is my little tip today for I uh, just want to encourage you to add some digital projects. Start assigning them. Now you may feel lost on, well, what? How? Okay, and that's where I come in. And I will, over time, be doing different Tech in Your Homeschool broadcasts about some of those projects and how to do them. You can also visit my blog. And um, if you see up here on my menu bar, I have a link right here for digital learning tools. And you can open up this page and see all my posts that I've written. So, for example, five ways to create timelines online, 50 projects homeschoolers can do with Canva. I have how to create a virtual art gallery, um, web tools for your aspiring designer, so just a lot of different ideas. You can also see over here in my sidebar, these are my favorite, right here, my favorite web tools to use for my kids' projects. And Maze presentation tool, well, I'm not going to get into detail of all them. I'll do that on another broadcast. In fact, I think I have before also shared some of these tools, or maybe that was on Periscope. So anyway, yes, so I want to encourage you that, with that. So now I've got a question for you, and this works too for those of you who are watching after the fact. Okay, I would like to know um, a project that you have planned sometime in the next few weeks for your kids to do in response to their learning. And I would like you to tell me what that project is and let me know if you need an idea of how to translate that or how to revise that into a digital project because I will give you some ideas. So let me know, are your kids, you know, going to be doing a lap book about, um, I don't know, about Flag Day, Betsy Ross, are they going to do, do a lap book about her? Let me know and I will give you an idea on how you can turn that lap book, instead of doing the lap book, how to turn it into a digital project. Also let me know how old your kids are so that I can gauge the project based on their age. So if you already have an idea on how you can turn a project or how in the past you've had a project that you turned into a digital project, let me know because we'll also share that and other people will be inspired by you also. So anyway, I will see you tomorrow. I'm doing these broadcasts almost daily at some point in the morning so you can catch me um, tech in your homeschool and hopefully we can start adding more tech to our homeschooling and letting the kids be more prepared for this future they have in this world where technology is all around us and always changing. So have a great day.